Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design an attractive subscribe section for any kind of website with Divi. So this is the final design we're aiming to achieve in today's tutorial. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Right, so right now I'm in my admin dashboard. So the first thing I did was I created a page and the next thing we need to do now is to go into the visual builder. So I'm going to click here on visual builder. Next, we want to click on start from scratch, right? So for now, I'm just going to close this. So let me go ahead now and start creating my dividers. So I'm going to come to the top left here on this gear icon to access my section settings. So I'm going to click on that, click on design dividers. So we need to start with the top divider. So I'm going to click this uh, drop down to find the divider style. So I'm just going to scroll down here because it's, um, it's further down and here it is. Okay, so that's my divider style. The quick thing I need to do here is to make sure that I, I flip uh, the uh, design like that. And then I need to make sure that this divider color is set to white and my divider height is set to 200. Right, next we need to add our bottom divider as well. So I'm going to click here on bottom divider, choose my style. And this is the style I'm going to go with. And over here on my divider height, I'm going to set this to 200 as we did before with the, with the um, top one. And then I'm also going to change this color to white. So next we need to add our custom padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And for the custom padding, I'm going to add zero to the top and bottom. And to make things easy for me, I'm just going to uh, activate this chain icon and add zero. So once I add zero there, it'll be added also to the bottom. Right, so pretty much we're all set here. I'm just going to go ahead and save and then I'm going to add my column structure. So right now, as you can see, I don't have access to my rows. So I'm going to come over here to expand settings, click on wireframe view, and then I'm going to click this plus button to add my column structure. So what I'm going to go with is this one here, two thirds, one third. So I'm going to select it, close this for now, and then I'm going to go back to my view. Now it's time to add our background gradient. So this gradient is going to be added onto uh, rows. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to access my row settings. Click on background. So we need to add a background gradient. So I'm going to click here on the second tab and then click on the plus button. So the colors we're going to use now, because we have uh, three color palettes that we're going to work with. And also, if you want to follow along step by step and uh, use the colors that I'm using in this tutorial, you can go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose one color palette that we have here on the article and use those colors. So I'm going to start off with my first color. And this first color here is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to click here on the color, drag this slider down so I can get the RGBA values. And then I'm just going to copy and paste my value for my color in this area right here. So now it's time to add my second color. So I'm going to paste it here. And this one here is not transparent, so it's, it's just a normal hexadecimal color. So that will just go in straight like that. Right, so the next thing we need to do here is to add our gradient direction. And this is going to be one, two, three. And then next, we need to make sure that place gradient above background image is set to yes, because we are going to be adding a background image here. So now it's time to add our background image. So I'm going to come over here to the third tab click the plus button. Now with the background image, you can choose any image that you want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to choose uh, an image which is in my library. So I'm going to go with this image here and click upload. So now that we've added our background uh, color and our background image, the next stage now is to go to column two background color. So I'm going to scroll down and we are going to add a color here to our column two. Now this color is going to be an RGBA. So I'm just going to drag this slider here and then paste my values within the brackets. Now it's time to make further adjustments to our row settings. So I'm going to click here on design and then I'm going to go straight to sizing because we really want this to fill the whole screen. So here on sizing, we're going to make sure that this is set to full width like that. And then we're going to come over here to gutter width and set this to one because we don't want any gaps between our columns. Okay, and finally, we're gonna click on equalize column heights, set this to yes. Now let's go to spacing. So I'm gonna click here on spacing and for our top and bottom padding, I'm gonna set this to zero. So I'm gonna activate the chain and just add my zero so that it's applied to both top and bottom. Next, I'm gonna come over here to column one top padding at 200 pixels and the bottom padding needs to be set as 100 pixels. 
Now it's time to go to column two. So column two padding, I'm going to set this to 300. Right, so we want our design to look beautiful on both the mobile devices and also the tablets. So let's go in here and add our um, sizes. So I'm going to click this little icon here, click on tablet. So for tablet, we are going to add 100 to the bottom. And this is both uh, for the tablet and also the smartphone. Okay, so back over here to my desktop view. Now column two, left and right, we're going to set this to 50. So I'm going to activate my chain and just add my 50 in here like that. So as our design is starting to take shape, I've just noticed that um, my dividers are not set correctly. So I'm just going to save this and go back into my section settings. Click on design, dividers. So what I need to do here is to flip and make sure that this is facing the right way. Okay, so that's just a quick fix and just to make sure that uh, the design looks right. All right, so now that we're done, the first thing we need to do here now in terms of our content is to add a blurb. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my blurb module. In fact, it's right here. I just might as well just select it. Great. So I'm going to come straight here to uh, image and icon and activate use icon. And we are going to need an icon here. So I'm just going to go down here because the one that I need is an arrow pointing up. And here it is. Okay, great. Now the content that we have here, we don't necessarily need this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. So I'm just going to come over here and delete all this like that. Now let's stylize this. So I'm going to come over here to design, image and icon. So first of all, I need to make my icon white so that it's easier to see on this uh, slightly dark background. So I'm going to select that. Now, as we can see, this arrow is a bit too big. So we need to make sure that this is slightly smaller. So to do that, we want to come over here to use icon font size, uh, set it to yes. And then our size here is going to be 43. So that's much better. Now let's adjust the title text. So the, the quickest way to do this is just to come over here and just hover over this area, C click on the paintbrush, and this will take you straight to the actual settings. So first of all, we're going to make this text white and we're going to change the font. So I'm going to click here on this drop down, and I'm going to search for the font that I want. And it's this one right here. I'm going to select it. Next, we're going to center this and we're going to give this a bit of, um, letter spacing, but this is going to be like a negative, uh, negative one. Okay. So that's much better. Right. So let's continue. So the next thing we need to do now is to go into sizing. So I'm going to click here and for the content width, we're going to set this to 150 and the width, we're going to set this to uh, 33%. Now for the tablet and the phone, we're also going to change this. So I'm going to come over here to this little icon, click on the tablet tab and set this to 40%. And the smartphone needs to be set at 60%. Great. So back over here to the desktop. Uh, the next thing I need to do is just to make sure that this is aligned and aligned center. Right. So now let's add a bit of breathing space. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And then for our padding top and bottom, we're going to set this to 50 pixels. So I'm just going to click and activate this chain icon and add my 50%. Great. So now we have a bit of breathing space around our module. Right, so what we need to do next is to clone this a few times. So I'm going to come over here and just do that twice. And all we have to do now is to go in and change these icons. So I'm going to go in here, click on image and icon, and I'm just going to choose. But for now, I'm just going to uh, select random, uh, random icons here. It doesn't have to be, you know, specific. Okay, so I'm going to come again onto image and icon and choose my icon. Right, so I'm going to go with this. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Now we want to make one of these highlighted. So let's go ahead and customize it. So I'm going to click here on the module settings, click on background, and we're going to give this a white background like that. Right. So now, as you can see, we can't really see what we have here in this area. So we need to change the colors of our icon and also the colors of our text. So I'm going to set this to black and I'm going to do the same with the text as well. Next, we're going to add rounded corners. So I'm just going to scroll down here until I get to border and we're going to give this about five pixels. Okay. So now it's nice and smooth. And then finally, we're just going to add a box shadow onto this. So I'm going to select the, uh, the first one. Okay. So now that is lifted off our background image, which is great. All right. So uh, moving on, we need to add some text to our column two. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go ahead now and save this and then click this plus button to add our text module. I'm going to search for it and select it. So our text here is just going to be basic. 
So we're just going to say stay in touch. Right, so the next thing we need to do now is to stylize our text. So I'm going to click this brush tool to uh, go straight to our text settings. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to change my text font. And I'm just going to search for it here. Select it. Now I need to uh, set my color. So the color here needs to be black. Okay. And next, I'm going to go to my text size and set this to 54. Right, so over here on the line height, I'm going to set this to 1 EM. So we're done with this for now. I'm going to go ahead and save. And now it's time to add our second text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here. Right, so as you can see, my text here is very close to my heading text. So we need to add some margins. So on the top here, I'm just going to search for it. And for the top margin, I'm going to set this to about 20 pixels. Okay, so that's much better now. We have enough uh, breathing space between the heading and my text. Right, so let's go ahead and save. And then I'm going to add one more item here. So I'm going to click this plus button. And this time we need to add our email opt-in module. So I'm going to select, I'm going to search for it. Okay, so that's my email opt-in module. So the first thing we're going to do here is to get rid of this color because we want our color to blend into this background. So I'm going to come over here to the background and I'm just going to click in the color area here and click this slider down until we get to full transparency. In fact, if you want, we could just add our, hex, our color in here, but either way it works. Okay, so now that we have this, our fields here, we need to make sure that... Um, we don't have all these fields. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to fields and disable my first name and also the last name. So now we're just left with the email and the subscribe. Now, what is important here before I continue is to make sure that you come over here to email account and set this with your service provider. So without doing this, if someone comes to your page, your emails won't even go anywhere. In fact, this won't even work. So you want to make sure that you have a... Um, a service provider. This could be MailChimp or any one of these that we have on this list. Okay, so I thought I'd mention that because that is very, very important. And then over here on the text, uh, we can get rid of this title because we don't need it. And also this text that we have on the bottom here, we don't really need. So all we have now is the opt-in information. Right, so what I'm going to do next is to add a background color to uh, this item. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to just scroll down and select my background um, shadow. And on the top here, this is set at three pixels. We just want to make sure that that is set to zero. Now, as you can see, our button here is not visible. So we need to uh, make a lot of changes to this button. So, so for our button text color, this needs to be set to white. Okay, so let's add our button background color. I'm going to click here on this plus button and paste my hexadecimal value like that. So if I scroll down here, we can also add some more... Um, settings so for our button border radius we can set this to zero so i'm going to come over here to border and just make sure i add zero in here and right now we have our button border width set at two let's set this to zero as well and the button radius as well to zero right so for the button icon here we can choose whichever icon you want to go with so for now i'm just going to go with uh, this right arrow so we can we can see this as we mouse over this area which is great Right, so the next thing we need to do is to come over here to our button font and I'm going to uh, search for my font. Okay, so I'm going to select it. And then finally, I'm going to add a box shadow like that so that these two items here look pretty much the same. Now, it's time to go on to our spacing because we need, to, we need this to be positioned correctly. So we're going to start off with our top margin. So our top margin here is going to be set at 20 pixels. So I'm just going to scroll down here until I get to spacing. So our top margin is going to be 20. And then for our tablet and smartphone, it's going to be set at zero. So I'm just going to come over here and make sure that uh, my value is added in here. So I'm going to set this to zero. And then for the smartphone, it's going to be the same thing. Set this to zero. Great. Then back over here to my desktop. So what we're going to do next here is to add a negative margin. So I'm going to add minus 60. So now we can see that everything has been moved over towards the left. But now we have a problem because this is way too long. So what we need to do is to add 60% to the right. That's much better. And again, for our tablet and smartphone, this needs to be set at zero. So as you can see, the moment I add zero on the smartphone, both to the left and the right, now everything is now visible in this area, which is great. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that on the tablet as well, things are looking great and this looks fine. And then I'm gonna switch over here to the desktop. So what we could also do here is to add social media follow icons. So I'm just gonna save this and add our social media follow, search for it. Right, so um, we can choose maybe three or four. In fact, there's quite a lot to choose from. So the one I'm gonna add here is YouTube. I'm gonna come over here to design and um, go to rounded corners. So we're gonna come over here to the borders and just add 50. Now, if we add 50 to this, you can see now that our icons now are within a circle. So this is exactly what we need to achieve. And then for our spacing, we are going to make sure that we have enough breathing space. So on the top margin here, we're gonna set it at 50. And if you wanna go ahead and change the colors of these icons, you can go ahead and do so. So pretty much that's all uh, we need to add here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. Okay, so this is our final design. If you wanna go ahead and try out different colors, we have uh, two more color palettes that you can experiment with. All these are in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So to save you time, all you have to do is to come over here and clone this section and then add your colors to the section that's below or the one above. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified when we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.